Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Woodpecker's Deep Dive. My name is Jeff Ferris. Welcome to the Woodpecker's Model Shop. In January of this year, we began manufacturing router bits, specifically solid carbide spiral router bits. Uh, and the ultra sheer router bits that we make uh, offer some very unique features to the woodworker. We're gonna talk about those today. We're gonna talk about some of the terms related to spiral router bits, what they mean, and how you can pick out the right router bit for your job. Okay, let's get started. Now there are basically three fundamental styles of spiral router bits. Upcut, downcut, and compression. We're gonna take a look at each one, uh, what it excels at, and when you wanna use each, each different style. Now the first is the upcut. Now upcut and downcut are a little bit confusing because it's a lot different between a handheld router and a router table. The router's on one side or the other, so which way's up? Well, up is always toward the router motor. So if I'm using a handheld router, up is really up, okay? The router motor is above the bit and the chip is coming toward the motor, so it's coming up. Now, if we're in a router table, everything's upside down like we have it over here. And so now, up is actually down. We're going toward the motor, which means we're going down. Okay, but just think about where the router motor is in relationship to the bit. So up cut is always pulling it toward the router. Now, of course, that means the down cut means that it's pushing the chips away from the router. Compression is the one that's a little bit different. On the compression bit, the first three eighths of an inch is up cut. It's pulling the chips toward the router. The rest of this whole length is down cut. It's pushing the chips away from the router. Now we're gonna take a look at why you would use each one of those. Starting with the up cut. What does that do best? Up cut bits are generally your best choice for solid wood. Most species don't chip at the surface the way plywood does. Up cut bits clear the chips from the cut better, plunge better, and resist burning. But in plywood, the surface can chip when you're cutting with an upcut bit, particularly when you're feeding across the grain like we have here. You'll get a cut that has a few chips and is really fuzzy right at the edge. So what's the answer for plywood? Well, if you're not going all the way through, the best answer is a downcut bit. Now your cutting action is toward the material. We're slicing into the material, so it doesn't get as fuzzy, you don't get the chips. Let me show you. But if our cut needs to go all the way through, the down cut bit is gonna cause a problem on the top of the surface. It's gonna create fuzzies there because it's pushing outward as it comes through the cut. So what are we gonna do if our cut needs to be all the way through cross grain in plywood? Well, that's where the compression bit comes in. So I swapped the bits. We now had the compression bit on. We're gonna go back into the same cut and continue it and see how much of a difference the compression bit makes. Because what's happening now is the top part of the cut is pulling the chips down, the bottom part of the bit is pushing the chips up, and we're gonna get a clean cut on both surfaces. Let's go. So our compression bit gave us a super, super clean cut on the top, whereas the down cut bit gave us fuzzies. Now on the other side, 
it's just as nice with either one because it's the same thing. We're working with down cut on the bottom side all the time, whether it's a compression bit or a down cut. It's when you have to go all the way through that you want to go to a compression style. So why not just use compression bits all the time for everything? Well, there's a few reasons. Uh, number one, they're a little more expensive than either upcut or downcut bits. So I tend to try and save them for projects where I really need them. The other thing they don't do if you're, if you're doing a mortise in the middle of a board, they don't plunge with a plunge router as well as an upcut bit. Uh, they do plunge better than a downcut bit, but not as good as an upcut. So I use upcuts anywhere that I can. I use downcuts anywhere that I can. So when you've got that situation where you're going all the way through, that's when you want to reach for the compression bit. Now, with so many choices and so many different bits, how do you decide which one you need? Well, I really, like we've talked about, that depends on your project and what you're doing. But let me tell you about the five bits that I use the most in my shop at home. Now here are the five bits that I find myself using over and over again. The first one is a three flute down cut. Anytime I'm cutting a dado, a groove, or a rabbit in a piece of plywood, this is the bit that I'm gonna be using. For dado grooves and rabbits in solid stock, I use an upcut bit almost exclusively. The only time I'd reach for anything else is if I have some type of wood that's giving me a problem. But almost always, you're gonna get it done with an upcut bit working in solid stock. Now for pattern routing, this is a compression bit for pattern routing. And this is what I use anytime I'm doing template work in plywood. For template work in solid stock, I'm using an upcut bit. And if I have a pattern with very, very tight inside curves, I have a compression spiral bit in quarter inch diameter to follow the narrow, tight inside curves on patterns. Now those aren't the only five bits that I have, but they're the ones I find myself using almost all the time. Hey folks, thanks so much for joining us today on Woodpecker's Deep Dive. I hope you enjoyed this closer look at our new spiral router bits. If you enjoyed the show, be sure and give us a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, be sure and subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you know about every one of our videos right when they come out. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time on Woodpecker's Deep Dive.